With the conclusion of the Second Punic War, we managed to secure our interests in the resource-rich Hispania as well as establish a strong network of alliances with the Berber and Numidian tribes, thereby securing the western frontier of our Republic. It was now time to turn our attention to the problems that plagued the East. The Illyrians, sensing our absence in the region and our inability to respond, tried to further their ambitions with rampant piracy in the Adriatic Sea. Meanwhile, the Antigonids of Macedonia having waged multiple wars in the Hellenic mainland in an attempt to re-establish Macedonian hegemony, have done much to disturb the balance of power and stability of the region. Rumours have it that they even signed a secret agreement with the Carthaginians during the Second Punic War to attack our holdings in Macedonia. To deal with the issue of Illyrian piracy, the Senate issued orders of an invasion of Illyricum, and so I was reinstated as commander of Legio I Italica and promptly marched towards Iadera, eliminating the Daorsi and capturing the settlement in the spring of 252 BC. Despite our initial victory against the Illyrian tribes, we knew that the true benefactors of the pirates were none other than the treacherous RDAI. Meanwhile, the Antigonids, having suffered a string of recent defeats at the hands of the Thessalian League, were in a weakened state leaving Tala ripe for the taking. However, our scouts reported that an Ardean army beat us to the settlement and besieged it. It was time to repay the treachery of the Illyrians and so we offered to join their war against the Antigonids and march Legio to Fratensis towards the settlement, making it seem that we intended to support their assault. However, come the crucial moment, we betrayed them. Consequently, they suffered a crushing defeat, losing a significant portion of their army in the process. With the RDAI and the Antigonids in a weakened state, the time to strike was ripe. And so we established diplomatic ties with the Spartans who were at odds with the entirety of the region. The weakened garrison of Pella fell without much resistance. Meanwhile, Dyrrhachium, the capital of the RDAI, no longer having an army to defend it proved to be an easy target for Legio I Augusta and Legio V Macedonica and fell in the year of 252 BC. To complete our control over the province of Illyricum, we managed to acquire the settlement of Deliminum from the Scordisii for a sum of 20,000 denarii. With the RDAI and the Antigonids crushed, it was time to push our offensive and conquer the remaining Greek city-states of Larissa and Athenae. The Thessalian League at Larissa managed to put up a commendable resistance, but in the end were no match for our overwhelming numbers and fell in the winter of 250 BC. Conversely, Athens fell in the following spring without much of a fight. Now all that remained was the city-state of Sparta, who, sensing our ambitions, decided to renege on their agreement and declared war against us. However, the fate of Greece was sealed and it was too little too late for even the famed Spartans to undo their fatal error. In the following spring, Legio 1, 2 and 5 surrounded the settlement and annihilated the Spartans. We were now the undisputed masters of the Hellenic world and with it, all of its cultural grandeur and philosophical wealth greatly enriched the Roman Republic. Meanwhile, Carthage, having constantly been attacked by our Numidian allies, decided to breach the terms of their humiliating peace treaty and raised an army and a fleet to deal with the Numidians. And so the Numidians sent their envoys to Roma to request our assistance. After much deliberation, cries of Carthago Delanda A were heard echoing across the Senate floor. It was now time to crush our age-old enemies once and for all and cement our position as masters of the Western Mediterranean, Carthago Delanda Ace. What is up my friends and how's it going and welcome back to the ninth episode of our Let's Play series as Roma with your fellow comrade Summary. Lucius Julius Libo has leveled up to the final level. Meanwhile, we have also completed our research in advanced barracks construction, which means we can go ahead and build that third level of auxiliary barracks, uh, which is quite crucial for our Marian auxiliary uh, units, which is what makes Roma so powerful as a faction. 
Uh, however, before we go ahead, let us uh, decide another technology and we are going to go for the denominational system as that will allow us to further improve our uh, settlement over here. And as you can see, we are going to talk very briefly about our settlements. And uh, uh, as you can see, we have quite a good income and Italia, which I have renamed the province, uh, because technically Latium is pretty much just the region of Roma itself. Um, Italia makes most sense. And I have gone ahead and renamed even the settlement over here to Ravenna. Because Ravenna was more of a... Um, more of a uh, more important city in comparison to Arimanium. Uh Meanwhile up here I've also gone ahead and renamed... Uh, Cisalpina to Gallia Cisalpina because that's what it was known as by the Romans. I have gone ahead and changed all of the settlement names uh, over here. Yadera, Dyrachium, uh, Pharsalus, Thessalonica, Athene, and of course uh, this is Achaia, which reminds me we will also have to change the spelling of Achaia. I is more commonly used, however E is not actually incorrect. And I actually stumbled upon E, so I thought that that was it. However, what I have realized since we are talking about auxiliaries is actually the fact that, um, you know, we are, we are heavily reliant on all of these auxiliary troops as the Roman Empire, as they will really supplement our army and they will really make Rome a military powerhouse, more than our co-legionaries actually. And that is because they come from that foreign population class. And speaking of foreign population class, as you can see, it is in the decline everywhere. So we have a minus 1.61% in, uh, in the uh, settlement of, it says ours, but it's actually Segentum. And meanwhile, in Abyssos, we can see it's minus 1.5. And of course, in Cartago Nova, it's minus 1.6. So what actually is happening is that because we have so many... Uh, buildings like temples that actually improve the first and second class population we are actually losing our peregrini uh, class and we don't want that to happen because then we will have a problem uh, recruiting over here in this province uh, so we want to keep it down low so the idea is i am going to specialize my provinces into two kinds of provinces and let's just have a quick look at the map uh, basically uh, Latin or sorry Italia and Magna Gratia will become co-Roman Latin recruitment uh, regions meanwhile Macedonia will uh, be a uh, auxiliary recruitment region the Salpina will start out as an auxiliary recruitment region uh, I will make it more of a hybrid region this one um, and then I will slowly uh, change it over to of course a uh, a um what do we call it uh, a purely latin um you know recruitment region and when i say latin i mean our co-legionaries will be recruited from here meanwhile hispania is going to be completely auxiliary based as well and um, so let's quickly go ahead and in hispania or we can start out hispania because we have a couple of armies over here as a again hybrid and then um Pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, converted into a pure auxiliary region. And the thing is, with Rome, and with of course our Marian units, we do not actually have any units that come from, uh, you know, the um, second and first class population. I mean, except for one eagle cohort. Um, all of the rest of the cohorts come from the proletarii, which is the third class population. And uh, all of the auxiliary troops obviously come from the fourth class population or the peregrini class. So what we need is actually to maximize our third and fourth class uh, population growth. And we are not helping our case by, you know, building up these temples. So we are going to go ahead and dismantle these temples. Quick look at the building over here. And as you can see, um, although this farming town is what I usually go for because I'm so used to playing Hellenic factions. Hellenic factions are my favorite and I'm actually really good at them. 
Um, and I would say so even better than I am with Rome. I mean, Rome is a personal favorite, don't get me wrong. And I have played Rome a great number of times. But considering the fact that we are going to have, uh, you know, 30 legions or at least I think 39 legions by the end of the campaign. That means we will have a lot of auxiliary requirement and it's not going to be a standard campaign and we could see ourselves running out of peregrini population class so uh, we have to basically uh, try to maximize our growth of the peregrini population class however if you look at the farming colonia uh, at the highest level it's giving a 1.5 growth rate for second and third class population which isn't too bad however it is giving a point seven for the first and fourth class population and all those this gives the maximum growth rate which is typically what i go for so that i can level up my provinces real quick i'm not going to do that in this case uh, the civil colonia on the other hand gives first and second class population which means we will never ever ever get this building because once again as i said we have a very few second class population units that we can recruit as rome such as the eagle cohorts and of course our roman uh, cavalry but we won't be relying on roman cavalry we will be relying on auxilia cavalry which is way better than uh, roman cavalry so pretty much uh, you know second class is useless and uh, first class on the other hand is absolutely useless because the only units that can uh, pretty much be first class units as rome are your praetorian units so uh, there's a very low requirement for first class units, so definitely the civil colonia will not be a part of our build. Meanwhile, the market colonia, now here's where things get interesting. It's giving us a 1.5% uh, growth rate to third class and fourth class population, so that's actually what we want to build. So let's go ahead and build that market town over there, and eventually it will become a market colonia. Meanwhile, we are going to dismantle all of the, um, you know, all of the buildings that kind of give us, uh, you know, debuffs to our second and, sorry, third and fourth class population. Meanwhile, even in the main settlement chain, we have three options. We have the Latin Rights province, which is basically your typical province. And then we have, uh, sorry, which is pretty much your military kind of uh, settlement. And then you have your Romanized provincial government, which is uh, your typical generic one. And you have your allied one. And your allied one is, of course, going to be your commercial equivalent. And as you can see with the commercial equivalent, we get a boost to our third class population, really, and first and second class. Meanwhile, with the Latin rights province, you get a boost to your first and second class. So once again, never build the Latin rights province. And uh, in terms of growth rate... Um, you know, uh, the Romanized provincial government is the best, but it gives a boost to first, second and third class population, which is not good. So what we want to do is minimize our first and second class. And the only option we have over here that does that is the allied or the commercial variant, which has uh, the mediocre growth rate. I mean, the Latin rights is the slowest. However, the commercial is medium and the generic is the best and it also gives research rate. So we're going to suffer a little bit when it comes to our research rate. So let's go ahead and do that. And before I go ahead and do anything else, let's quickly build up this auxiliary uh, camp. And meanwhile, we are also going to upgrade our auxiliary camp over here. Stop constructing that building. Go ahead, dismantle it. Um... Before we do anything else, I am in the process of building a war horse breeder because actually in the province of Italia, I want to maximize my, it's not going to be a main recruitment province. However, if it is, then it's not the end of the world. Um, the reason being is because, you know, that first class population is going to come in handy uh, because once again, uh, we are going to have a very agricultural based economy. And as you can see over here, we can go ahead and build the Circus Maximus uh, at the maximum level. And that actually gives plus 20 public order per turn. So we don't need any of our temples, really. And what we can do is we can actually stack up more farming buildings. Uh, and in specific, we are going to go for the Slaughterhouse, which gives an additional 850 wealth from livestock agriculture, which means um, the province of Italia will be the best S tier province, hands down. I mean, 
and this is only viable as roam so in my ranking i often rank asia as the best and that's because typically with any faction asia is the best uh, and egypt is arguably you know a very close competition to that however as roma i feel that we can pretty much upgrade uh, you know italia or latium uh, into a massive massive uh, behemoth of a, like you know monster of a province let's go ahead and do that because typically we can get just all uh, wealth based buildings over here we can just focus on of course the war horse breeder which will give us um, or the circus maximus which will give us 20 public order per turn the Colosseum, which will give us 24 public order per turn and uh, of course uh, even we can even build up uh, the pantheon which is a temple let's go ahead and have a look over here so we have the pantheon which gives uh, you know 25 public order per turn three public order in all provinces and 12 latin cultural influence and uh, yeah that's going to be pretty insane however that being said and done what we want to also focus on is in the province of Magna Gratia, as I said, it's going to be our core uh, Latin recruitment province. So we want to maximize our third class population and the building that actually helps with that is actually our farms and uh, not just the farms, but rather the other option of the, uh, uh, you know, the cattle ranch, which is basically... Um, or the slaughterhouse, which is basically the cattle ranch. And in the case of the cattle ranch, you can see it's giving plus one to our third class population. Meanwhile, what we also want to do to help with our empire maintenance, which is still pretty significant, is we want to convert all of our cloacas, which is the third option of our sanitation building, into Vigilius Urbani. This will reduce our growth rate which is quite painful however and it will also reduce our latin cultural influence however it will give us a minus two empire maintenance and a plus three experience for all new agents that we recruit from the region and of course it's also going to give a plus 20 wealth from agriculture which will be useful in a province like this when we will turn on the taxation no doubt let's go ahead and convert those and uh yeah since we are getting like a minus one empire maintenance we might uh, have to get rid of this building because it's giving 2% uh, you know population boost to our first class citizens it's going to tank our research rate but it is what it is uh, there's pretty much nothing much I can do about that and I am instead going to convert it into a uh, forum ba baurum or boarum boarium sorry and uh, the reason being is that not only does this give bonuses to our agriculture for sure, that is that goes without any question, but what it does do is give us plus two to our third class citizens, and we really need to focus on those third class citizens. However, you know, speaking of our population, one of the things that we can do is we can go ahead and disband all of our armies and rebuild our legions. And what that actually does is that all of these units uh, are of a higher population class such as of course if you look at the triarii they come from the patrician or the first population class as do the equites and meanwhile our principes as well as our hastati come from the uh, second population class however if you go ahead and upgrade them into a legionary they they will be uh, they will be converted into third class population so that is a free way of getting third class population which is actually the demand for the roman faction if we go ahead and disband this then we are just increasing our first and second class population which is what we want to steer clear of however that being said and done let's convert this into an auxiliary barracks um and we are dismantling over there and to improve our foreign population class we're going to build this building over here which is basically the stadium and the stadium gives 400 wealth from entertainment however more importantly it gives that plus one foreign population uh, that being said and done we will soon want to get rid of uh, of this building however i'm not going to do that because i need the warhorse breed to continue building uh you know the warhorse breeder in italia and eventually of course the circus maximus however with that i 
think I can go ahead and look at all of my provinces. And I think what's going to happen over here is that I actually thought about it long and hard. And I am actually going to simply disband the temple over here. And uh, disband even this building over here. And then I will explain why shortly. It's because I actually want to build a brick layer over here. And over here I will build a temple. Which is basically the Basilica of Vulcan. So I will spec up uh, Hellas to become an industrial hub. Uh, similar to Asia. However not quite as good. And the reason being is I have in the turn between turns had a lot of time to think about the direction in which I want to, you know, proceed with my army building. And uh, typically what I want is, of course, um, you know, to focus on my... And let's have a look at the auxilias that are available over here. They're not really that good, these uh, Illyrian ones. So what we are going to do is we are going to focus on, uh, you know, making this into another latin uh, recruitment region so i'm pretty happy with that and uh, let's go ahead and we can build that up for that third class population however i'm gonna hold back on that uh, meanwhile over here this is gonna be a hybrid I'm gonna build an auditorium or a stadium over there and since it's a hybrid uh, i am just basically going to focus on a military building over there and build yet another stadium over there. Make sure to convert this into a market town. And maximize, of course, our... Maximize our third and fourth class population. And we are out of money. However, we are making a decent amount of money. And, uh, you know, I can pretty much live with that. Of course, our food is uh, looking pretty weak, rather. If we turn on the taxes anywhere over here. And I don't really care about what's going on in Karalis or Skoska, Sardinia, because I'm not going to be able to recruit anything over here. I mean, technically I can, but why should I? Because it's going to be a hassle, you know, moving back and forth from the islands unnecessarily. So I can just leave it with, of course, the scriptorium is a, is a good thing to have over there. However, without any further ado, let us hop right into politics and in our political screen... Uh, as you can see over here, all of our political rivals are fairly loyal with the exception of the Gens Papira and that is because they are populist and our taxation is actually on high because I actually need that uh, that income to kind of, uh, you know, restructure my entire provinces across my realm. And uh, pretty much after I'm done that, I will bump down the taxes back to medium. However, to deal with the problem of this faction being disloyal, what I can do is select one of their political members and see if there are any provinces I need to improve my public order in. And I don't need to, but I can send them to organize games in Latium and that should give us a little bit of extra food, which means we can turn on the taxes in Beneventum or in Magna Gratia, which is giving us now 24,000 which is fantastic actually because we really really want to culturally or oh, sorry completely overhaul uh, these buildings over here however that being said and done I think I am pretty much happy with what's going on over here I'm busy dismantling all of these buildings we'll go ahead and dismant uh, convert that get rid of some scriptoriums and keep the scriptorium in Taraco since we don't really care about the population class of Taraco. Uh, however, I don't want to go too much overboard. I still want to maintain some of our foreign population class. But maybe if I'm able to convert Taraco quite well, I will convert that into a military uh, recruitment region as well. So get a military recruitment region in Taraconensis, uh, which will be Latin. However, without any further ado, let's have a quick look at our politics, as I said. We are still overly influential in the Senate, which is not giving us a lot of debuffs, save for the plus 5 political uh, incident occurrence, which is not that bad, actually. And I actually quite like that, uh, because uh, from as long as you consider our buffs, our buffs are pretty much a lot better, uh, you know, as opposed to respected in the Senate. 
we get a minus three upkeep for all armies however the plus three for all land units is quite good the minus five percent construction cost is also good over here two percent tax is a five percent tax which is insane three public order is completely gone so yeah however since we have spoken about politics I am going to make a guide on, uh, you know, politics over here because I have, uh, you know, uh, kind of understood how to do politics a bit better, uh, you know, over the course of this Let's Play series. But what we are going to do is, uh, of course, invade uh, Carthago. And for that, we are going to send Legio to uh, Ten Fratensis all the way to Carthadasht. Go ahead and besiege the settlement. We can't actually disembark because of this agent over here, which is pretty annoying. Let's see if our spy can actually assassinate him. He has a 39% chance of assassinating him, and that is actually quite good. So he actually assassinated him, which is good. Okay. Our army is now besieging Carthago, and we are going to fight the siege manually. Um, as I do want to pretty much uh, you know fight that battle it's going to be a battle of epic proportions meanwhile our fleet over here classes one victress is going to assist legio to augusta move down south and uh, we are going to move classes one victress over there to assist it and another thing i'm actually going to engage in is actually going to change the names of these fleets so classes one Victress, put it in all caps that makes it a little bit easier to identify over here since we do we will soon start to get a lot of them and straight off the bat you can see capitals means it's a fleet or an army and not only that i am reducing some characters which means longer names will be possible so i'm gonna do that i'm not gonna show you uh what i do but basically i'm gonna do that in the uh you know before i end the turn However, that being said and done, I think I am done with this turn. I am ready to end the turn and I will see you all in the future when we are ready to attack the Carthaginians. Welcome to the future. We have moved a few turns into the future. We're having a food shortage. That's because, of course, we are taxing up our provinces over here. Uh, let's say we turn off the taxation in Macedonia. And there we go. We are now making food. And a uh, quick look at our politics. Our political parties are also quite loyal towards us. And we have a lot of income. Uh, however, the reason why I stopped in this turn is because I think Legio 10 Fratensis is ready to attack Carthadas. So we will hop into the battle shortly. Meanwhile, Legio 3, Irene AK, and I have gone ahead and renamed some of our legions. Uh, Legio 3 Kyrene AK uh, is one of them. Uh, Legio 10 Fratensis, of course. Uh, meanwhile, up here we have Legio 3 Gallica. We also have Legio 4 Macedonica. And uh, we have Legio 5 Alaude over here. And the main purpose of this is to actually take all of the Peregrini units from Legio 5 Macedonica. The reason being is that I actually... Uh, all of the Sokii troops actually come from the Peregrini population class. So let's go ahead and get them. Meanwhile, we can also get the Perites. I can see them. Principe, Samnitiki. And of course, our Equites Extraordinary all come from that... Um, all come from that Peregrini population class and we're actually going to move them all the way up in Cisalpina. I have determined that Genua is having a population issue. We're going to find a place where they are actually getting a positive population rather. Uh, because if they are not getting that, then we are anyways going to run out of population over there. But with that being said and done, let's quickly go ahead and build up our settlements as we desire um definitely um okay so Pharsalus is giving 
plus 0.71 growth for the Peregrini. Plus 0.9, so almost non-existent. 1.87 so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, disband him in uh, in uh, Thessalonica however you can see if I upgrade it uh, it will upgrade into the plebeis over here which is what I don't want and if I upgrade these ones it'll upgrade into the uh, proletari which is the third class population but keep in mind of course we are specking up a macedonica to be a auxiliary recruitment region so definitely i don't want to be uh, doing that meanwhile in of course uh, in of course latium we are suffering a little bit when it comes to our public order i mean it's just on the verge but our taxes are on high so keep that in mind uh, let's go ahead quickly um build up all of the buildings that we desire we don't need the cryptorium over there we are going to convert all of that against building up that scriptorium meanwhile this we need to convert it into a market colonia fantastic everything over here is, uh, looks fine uh, meanwhile everything over there also seems to be fine we'll go ahead and actually build the Shrine of Minerva, which gives extra research rate in, of course, provinces that don't matter like here. And of course, Tarakonensis will eventually be a Latin province, so we can even build it over there. However, we can convert this as well. And as you can see, just converting all of our buildings is uh, really taking a toll on our economy. So yeah, we have to be very careful with that. But speaking of the conversion, um, Cartago Nova, minus 0.23, minus 0.28, and minus 0.29. So I'm going to wait for a little bit before I can go ahead and just disband these units over here. Wait for our foreign population class to start to grow and then we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, disband all of those units. But that being said and done, I think the main reason why I paused at this turn is to obviously attack the city of Carthago as well as Tapsos. Meanwhile, I have moved classes to Italica all the way into the Adriatic Sea to attack the pirate fleet. And we are going to give chase to these pirates, get rid of them once and for all. And can we auto resolve it? I don't think I would like to. So I'm going to quick save and I hop into the battle. I'm not going to show this battle. It's going to be a pretty easy battle. However, I will see you once the battle is done. All right. Welcome back. We have gone ahead and defeated that pirate fleet. Go ahead and quickly enslave all the captives. And I believe our admiral has also leveled up. So go ahead and give him uh, that extra campaign movement that is very important as a navy and uh, just like that you can see his campaign movement has improved we can go ahead put him up in apollonia over there come over there quickly and over here we want to upgrade all of our troops if we possibly can and we don't need to upgrade these troops because they are proletari class already so we can just go ahead and move into Farsalus and just disband them over here the remaining troops we need to upgrade kind of however it is costing us 7000 uh, let's have a quick look at Saguntum since we have proletari let's go ahead and disband them this should help a little bit with of course our growth rate of our proletari as you can see yes the proletari is growing quite nicely now and ooh, saguntum actually has a low peregrini and yes we are waiting of course for that to happen uh for the growth rate to make a turn however we are going to move our champion into the other army for military training because Lucius Julius Lebo is maxed out. Meanwhile, in terms of influence, as you can see, we are still at 52. What I will need to do is so very quickly have a look at what we can do as far as taxation is concerned. This party is fairly disloyal towards us. Uh, let us go ahead and see if we can marry off a character. That is good. Uh, what do we have over here? We have a character with three ambition. That is great. 
So what we can do is actually send this character C. We can improve the public order in any of our provinces. Illyricum seems to be the best option. Let's go ahead, send him to improve the public order in Illyricum. Our influence is now down to 51. And when it reaches 49, we will be respected in the Senate, which comes with no debuffs whatsoever. However, that being said and done, we are going to move this army towards Thessalonica and then disband him over there. It's good. Perfect. And I think with that, we are done with our politics. We're done with whatever we need to do with our characters. And I am going to go ahead and fight the Siege of Carthage first. Quick save over here. And we will hop into the long anticipated battle. All right, welcome to the battle. We have deployed our army in this section of the city. We are going to attack the length of this wall over here because this is the best wall to attack. Uh, this wall is not that good. Let's quickly move into the tacti uh, tactical map overview. And if we attack this section of the wall and uh, can't see the color over there because it is in the shadow. But however, if we attack this section of the wall, the enemy kind of has a, a U shaped over there. So we will be attacked from all sides, which isn't good. So definitely the only other option is, of course, this side, which has two gates. And uh, the idea is pretty much that we have our archers in the front over there. Quickly select that blue color. Okay, we have our archers in the front over there. And we have our ladders one, two, three, and four. Uh, basically, these ladders will try to capture the gate over here. You will try to neutralize the tower, capture the gates over here. And uh, they do have a supporting troop of infantry behind them. Uh, each of these towers have that supporting unit. Uh, meanwhile, we have a tortoise as well over here and here. And this tortoise will try to break this section of the wall. Angle section breaking it uh, dis destroys both this section as well as this section. So always try to attack any angle that you see. And we could attack yet another angle from this direction. Uh, however, I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that. And you know what? I am actually going to do that because I think that is better. So yeah, let's go ahead and attack this section and this section. But if we do that, then this tower will lay it in on us. So I'm just going to stick to the plan. Hit this section of the wall somewhere over here. And of course, they have spear troops to support. So basically all of our sword units will go fight on the ramparts since they have a bonus to fighting on the ramparts. Meanwhile our spear units will enter the breach and try to hold down as many units. We're not looking to win at the breach but if we win at the breach then our cavalry can get involved in the fighting. Uh, meanwhile speaking of cavalry we have our equites extraordinary on the left flank, equites on the right flank, a general slightly ahead. And of course, you can see this uh, triplus axis quincus formation over here. And these are, of course, our Hastati, our Principes, and our Triarii, that are Latin class population. Meanwhile, our Velites are all the way in the back, uh, basically as a reserve to help support. However, without any further ado, let us go ahead and start the battle. Quickly move up our archers, as we don't want the enemy missile troops to... To kind of fire against us. And when I say fire against us, I mean I don't want them to attack my ladders with the fire arrows. And if I put my archers up front, then they will select the archers. Quickly go destroy that section of the wall. Keep destroying all the sections of the wall. Since we are in the process of Moving slowly up forward. Our hidden units have been discovered. We slowly move up all of our troops. And I have kept them in that narrow formation so that. Uh, I have realized that it's going to make easier to, you know, use the siege equipment. So let's just kind of do that. Meanwhile, these guys are not entirely sure what they are actually doing. Move really slow over there. 
on this side we want to move up also really slow over there be fantastic now archers as you can see they are taking the brunt of the damage however i'm okay with that because i pretty much uh, want to focus on of course the protecting meanwhile our equity is extraordinary uh you are in group three you can come all the way over here try to burn down the gates but do so in a fashion where you don't interrupt the siege equipment because every time siege equipment has to move through something it actually takes a lot of time and it's a good compromise in the case of our archers preventing our ladders from being burnt but for all other instances we kind of want to stop our units from you know overlapping over there quickly get both of these swords units up here in the center the spear unit can stop potatoes can move up over there in the center now they will not interfere with any unit in meanwhile this tortoise and this is the tortoise uh, someone asked me a question what a tortoise was and this is a tortoise we are moving it slowly up towards the walls let's go ahead our hastati can start burning down the gates real quick them into position keep running one of our units has used all its ammunition all right now that our hastati are almost in position come on get a bit closer one of our units start burning down the gates Equites can also start burning down the gates. So we have two archers over here that are not firing. We can reposition them over here. Get these two archers behind. Actually, I'm going to leave them over there. I don't mind them soaking damage. They are very greeny population class. So not the end of the world if they take a little bit of damage. Alright, our siege equipment is slowly but surely making its way to the walls. I forgot to turn off the battle timer, so we're gonna have to kind of win this battle on a timer. We await your command. And you know what? I should actually make the battle timer 60 minutes. Because that's a good sweet spot. By your command. Get our troops up ahead. You have done good. Get you up ahead. Your orders ready. Meanwhile, our Hastati can throw their javelins over there. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Okay, fantastic. And now I want you to come here and I want you to come to this section. Meanwhile, you can kind of get a little bit closer over here. Have we started ramming this wall? Yes, and we have already breached this wall. Quickly narrow up the formation so that they move around really nicely. Get them on either side. ramming yet another section of the wall quickly form up over here cavalry keep going and of course they are losing decisively and a good news okay, and they're routing is even better news and once all of these troops climb the ladder entirely over here i can you know force them to go further deeper and all the way over here these troops should have kind of gotten through that uh, meanwhile move our cavalry over here to deal with this unit move this unit all the way up front keep moving forward 
Okay. This unit is up the ladder, so let's go ahead and move with our other units. You can go ahead up that ladder. Perfect. Over here, these units are nearly done as well. Our equities extraordinary. You need to get out of that engagement. Very quickly try to make a dash for that unit. Meanwhile, over here, we have a medium phalanx unit. Let's get really close. Force them to come out if they can. And as you can see, we broke through segments of the wall. So this is a bigger breach in comparison to this breach, which is fairly narrow. Let's go ahead, attack that heavy shock cavalry. Meanwhile, over here, we've done a good job with our Equites Extraordinary. Coming in pretty clutch over there. These guys have gone up, so we can send these guys as well. And we can even move our general close by to inspire. One of our units has used all its ammunition. While these hoplites are pretty much chilling over there, so let's actually get our velites close by over here. So that they can throw their javelins towards this hoplite unit. As of course attacking a hoplite unit through the breach is, the is suicide. Which men are wavering? Those guys are wavering. We'll come up over here. Hurry up. General. We have a bunch of medium phalanx units over there actually. That's not looking good. General over here can just wait over here to inspire that wavering unit. Okay, it's extraordinary. You can come back over here. Try to burn down those gates. I think we need to get into the breach. What I'm actually going to do is... Try to form up over here real quick. Uh, into the narrow formation. Keep running. Get out of the way. You have a better opening, so come all the way here. Hurry up, come on. Keep running. Fantastic. And now form up over here. Try to attack this Hoplite unit in the sides like this. And our Velites will get to throw into their backs, which is perfect, actually. Let's actually do that. Quickly form up over here. We should be able to deal with this hoplite unit fairly easily now. Thanks to that little bit of a maneuvering. We have a look of what's going on over here. We are winning on the ramparts. Now our Velites are also nearly in position. Get both of our Prince Pace to attack this unit. Other Prince Pace can go ahead and attack this unit over here. Not the general though. Let's go ahead with the general and inspire everyone over here. So that they fight a little bit better. Perfect. The Velites can now start throwing their javelins into the unshielded side of the enemy. These guys should take quite a lot of damage because of that as you can see 170 165 they are absolutely getting destroyed which is actually very perfect maneuvering over here pristine pristine maneuvering really clean and of course ah we are losing the tower over here so let's quickly send these units across to keep neutralizing the tower and get our normal equities over here as well Go ahead, charge that archer unit that is returning to the fray. At your service. Fantastic. Done over here. Now these spearmen can charge into the city. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Another unit is losing quite decisively, which is good news. On equities, get in there. 
The Lites have done actually quite well. 100, 100, 100 kills. Almost. Let's quickly get these guys a little bit over there. And of course, our spearmen should actually do quite well against cavalry. We just see cavalry dying. So it's pretty much a game of rock, paper, scissors over here. Go ahead, keep burning down those gates. Cavalry in position to attack. Fantastic. Our general. Okay, we have done over here with the cavalry. Let's quickly... Oh, there's another bunch of cavalry coming over here. We need to deal with them. Go for it. Meanwhile, I think now is the time to get our Hastati into that breach. That breach is actually the weak point for the enemy. Go ahead, Velites. Keep throwing into these units. How much of the gate have you actually burnt? 99%. So the gates are burnt over there. Group 4, where are you? Come over here. I don't understand how the combat is even over here. Fantastic, this unit is busy retreating. Meanwhile, we have attacked the flanks over here. Cavalry unit is going to suffer a little bit. The elites are getting into the fray, of course. Now this cavalry is here, we can start burning down those gates. The unit is losing decisively. Let's come over here and try to inspire him. These gates are kind of burnt. It means I actually want to get my legionaries here and actually move our Equites Sokii or Equites Extraordinary towards that side. The general is in position. And let's go ahead and inspire everyone over here. Go ahead, keep attacking. Equites. Totally wipe out this unit, please. Even after that, go ahead and chase this unit if you can. And you can't for some reason. That's fine, just keep burning down the gates. Okay. Wait, before we can charge in, we can actually go into a very narrow formation, throw up all our javelins. Keep pushing in. Okay, this unit is very tired, very tired, very tired, very tired. Go ahead, burn down the gates. You, I want you to move out over there if you can afford to do so. What about you? Where are you exactly? You're on this section of the wall. Okay, our principes have thrown in all their javelins. So let's select the two of them that have thrown their javelins and put them to, through the breach. And while we can do the same over here. Our cavalry and wait for this hoplite phalanx to kind of engage this unit so keep pushing up this unit keep pushing them up come on keep running up keep running up i want to hop that hoplite to kind of turn and show their flank to us and then we can charge with our cavalry general needs to come here real quick and okay we are going to lose a unit over there on that section of the wall we're almost at the 50% mark. I actually forgot to get up there with this unit. That's my fault. Absolutely. Quickly burning down the gates. Quick look of what's going on over here on the right flank. Have these hoplite units kind of engaged? And they have. 
Let's go ahead and charge over there. The enemy have taken a tower. These guys up on the Sons of Mars. Well, you can also go up over there. Forward, Pastati. Equities. Hey, what's going on over here? Unit has perished. And we lost one of our Amnitiki troops. Now the Elites can go ahead, charge over here, get our Equites, Extraordinary, somewhere over here, get them uh, out of that fight, because of course the Hoplite units have turned around. It means our Elites can now attack their, their rear. Okay, quickly on the other side of the battle. I think it's time to charge these units down. Meanwhile, you, where are you? Hmm. Go back into the fray. Keep attacking over here into that breach. And the cavalry can charge once again into the backs over there and pretty much break that unit. And then we will have a free movement of cavalry into the settlement, which will be very, very helpful indeed. And while both cavalry can go ahead and attack over here. Our archers go ahead and attack that unit. We're not doing anything much. General, hide your ability and use the inspire over here. Fantastic. Come back. Killing this cavalry unit, make sure it doesn't return back to the fighting. Dupri charged over here. You've gotten rid of that hoplite unit, which is great. Go ahead, deal with that unit. Okay, fantastic. Have about 20 minutes to win this one. And we really need to burn down that over there. And I have no idea why these guys aren't actually... Okay, they are actually moved down. Go ahead, keep burning that. Group 3. No, I want you to come here, Group 3. Don't attack in that direction. Come here. I'm going to make you Group 4. Meanwhile, you, you will be the new Group 3 because I keep getting confused because group 3 is usually on my left flank. Pull behind. Keep attacking in there. Fifty percent strength and I'm just gonna wait for a couple of these units to get exhausted a bit. This one is exhausted, so actually let's pull him behind. Over there. In cavalry, you're looking good. Go ahead, charge over there. The other cav, start burning down these gates. move over there well you're exhausted you're active so you can just pretty much attack over there all right 18 more minutes to go this gate is burning down which is good news well we're gonna commit all of our archers to attacking over there this is the problem because they have a bunch of hoplites that are protecting it over there Well, over 
here we are in the process of and i don't know okay yeah we can go ahead and attack those units so let's do that a uh, quick look at our cavalry i think they have dealt with or dispatched that unit let's go ahead and charge over here thankfully they have been on both sides so can do and that was a good charge we actually caught them off guard so they are losing already and of course when we charge into their backs it's going to be even worse for them there we go now they're losing decisively meanwhile group three have you burnt down these gates yes you have so just charge into that settlement start attacking this unit And you guys are exhausted, so I want to pull my general over here. Try to, you know, give you one last, um, you know, ability improved second wind. So that you can break the deadlock over there. While these troops are tired, they can come back down. A couple of these units can keep attacking. And I think it's time to pull up our Principe troops, bring them up ahead. Cavalry, keep attacking. Meanwhile, group 4, you're almost done over here, which is good news. Which means I am going to focus on charging you into the rear over here. Very quickly come over here. Go ahead, charge into that rear. Take two of you actually and put you on this direction. The other two can charge into this rear. And you want to always attack the weaker units, the ones that you can route first. Because the less units they have here in the blob, the more likely uh, their morale will drop. So I could rear charge, of course, a... Um, could rear charge a... Um, a unit that's uh, stronger however i don't want to do that very quickly over here select two of these units put them over there do i have any group that i can use no i do not uh, meanwhile take the other two units we can cycle charge once again pull them back over here real quick these two units now have gotten around which is great news go ahead charge over there these two units over here select you keep moving okay, go for it wonderful three keep attacking come on prince base have made it let's actually get them into the settlement towards the victory condition just in case we're not able to defeat the enemy and keep attacking our general I want that second win ability go ahead second win that unfortunately didn't actually reach these guys okay cavalry go ahead charge once again over there you've done a good job over here Means I can't completely encircle this bunch of units. And one of them is losing decisively and that's this one over here. Fantastic. We actually charged the right unit. Meanwhile, charge these spear units as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello. Go ahead, charge over here. Prince Bays are slowly making their way towards the city center, which is great. A pretty massive battle, really. It's taken a lot of time, really. Uh, however, you know, I'm not too unhappy with that. The performance over here, we've pretty much handled it really well, with the exception of, of course, one unit that we managed to lose. Of course, go ahead, keep attacking over here, make sure that we keep collecting 
all of these units to keep attacking that unit over there. And then group four. Attacking at your service. Of oh, you came out. In the name of Rome. Okay, fantastic. Keep charging over there. We have just about 10 minutes left. We have to win the battle before that. So it's going to be a little bit close. However, these units have kind of withdrawn. That's great. These guys are wavering. And with that, I think we are going to win the battle. And it was a well-fought battle. And of course, worthy of uh, Carthage and Rome face-off. And uh, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and see you all in the campaign. Alright, that was a decisive victory. We only lost one unit of Principe Samnitiki. Very greeny class, so I don't really care. We are going to go ahead and raise the settlement of Carthage. We could loot it. But I am going to go ahead and raise Carthage because Carthage should be destroyed. Let's go ahead. Raise that settlement. At your command. Wonderful. And uh, in hindsight, we shouldn't have. But the good news is that we have Legio 3 Kyrenike over here. We're going to go ahead and auto-resolve. That's a very easy auto-resolve. And here we can loot to get that extra income. Now, what we need to do is we need to repair the buildings we need, dismantle all of the buildings we don't need, go ahead, repair these two buildings, um, put that over there, I want to build you as well as a temple, and uh, pretty much have a look at anything else, if we can do anything else for this turn, we want to convert this and that didn't cost us a great deal. So we're going to have a look around real quick of all the other things we can do. Can go ahead and convert this as well. It'll help a little bit extra with that Empire Maintenance. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with uh, that. And I think I can go ahead and end the turn. And I will see you all in uh, the distant future when I am ready to... You know, take out uh, Lipki as well as Euphranta and wipe out the Carthaginians. Alright, welcome to the future. We didn't actually wait too long. And we haven't really replenished anything. So we are just going to keep pushing. Uh, once again, it's a pretty good auto-resolve. Let's go ahead and auto-resolve this one. And over here. I want to peacefully occupy that actually. Um, do I... Do I want to peacefully occupy? No, I am going to raise the settlement to improve the public order over here. And of course, we want to build up that building as well as the temple. Go ahead, repair these buildings. And in the next turn, maybe we can attract Refranta and wipe out the Carthaginians. Meanwhile, everything is looking good and we are still in the process of converting uh, all of our provinces. And our political factions, all of them seem to be very loyal, which is a good thing. Meanwhile, as far as politics is concerned, we're still at 51 influence. We're trying to push it down slightly a nudge. And once we deal with that, then we should be able to take care of the Carthaginian faction. With that being said and done, our fleets are also slowly making its way towards Carthadash. The idea is to kind of... Uh, kind of get back towards Aggregentum and I'm not sure if this army can reach Carthadash and they actually can't so let's actually move towards Aggregentum take that chance and uh, you should be able to replenish in the next turn but that being said and done I am going to go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the final turn in which we will capture the settlement of Euphranta Okay, my friends, welcome to the final turn of this episode. 
we have a political intrigue, characters returned from vacations, banditry of missing supplies, we have a good amount of uh, denarii in our treasury and a good amount of income per turn. Meanwhile, a quick look at our provinces. Italia is pulling in 56,701 denarii. That is good. Uh, meanwhile, I think in Cisalpina, maybe, just maybe, we don't want to recruit these guys. I mean, it's just giving us access to two units. So what we are actually going to do is we are going to just go ahead and make this into a military recruitment region. And uh, that being said and done, what we need to do is we need to quickly dismantle this building, build another set of farms over there. Fantastic. And in about three turns, we should be able to build the Forum Venarium, or actually, I believe it is the Forum Borium that we want for that extra 2% uh, population boost for third class. And uh, since we are doing that over there, we are not going to require anything over here. So let's go ahead, dismantle these buildings. And uh, go ahead, dismantle this one as well. Keep dismantling all of these buildings. Now, what we are going to do is actu actually focus on making this into a research province. Fantastic. And... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Meanwhile, over here, Legio 5 Macedonica can move towards Brundisium. I have gone ahead and upgraded all of the troops so that I get that extra proletarii uh, as well as plebes. And we can go ahead over here, upgrade all of them, get that extra armor. And now we are going to go ahead and disband these units so that they go into Brundisium. And of course, you can see Brundisium is doing quite well when it comes to our population. Uh, yes, next what I would like to do is I would like to start building up our legion. So let's go ahead and build Legio 5 Macedonica. And the easiest way to do this is to actually look at the numbers over here. And the minute you start to see the number 5, that's when you want to stop. And over here we see the number five so we get our eagle cohort plus nine cohorts of uh, of our regular cohorts and there we have a legio by macedonica all built up uh, however that being said and done let us actually go ahead and do the same over here keep in mind we only want to do this for our our usual population class and not every single one of our population so go ahead upgrade over there and now that that is upgraded we're going to select all of these troops and uh, disband them in segmentum wonderful and over here we can uh, recruit the uh, Legio 10 Equestris. I, I actually want to rename that. And we'll make it Legio 7. Claudia. Pia Fidelis. I believe. Okay that should be fine. Let's have a quick look. At all of our legions over here. I'm actually going to retain that as Legio 10 Equestris. I'm sorry. Just mixed up over here. Equestris. Alright. And then we are going to reinstate the legacy or something of the sort. With well, that being said and done, let's quickly get this guy placed or... No, I'm s sorry once again, Legio. Because Legio 10 Equestris was actually recruited by uh, Julius Caesar. So, and it was his favorite uh, legion, so... We are going to reserve that for him. And, uh, sorry for the spoilers. And of course, uh, let's go ahead and recruit, uh, 
Legio 7 Claudio Pio Fidelis. However, I think instead of Legio 7, we do have another Legio 6, and that is Ferrata. Legio 6 Ferrata. So let's go ahead and get that Legio 6 Ferrata. It's a very easy to spot unit with the black shield. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A uh, nine, sorry, nine regular cohorts, so not ten. We can go ahead and hide this. Uh, so everything's looking good over there. Meanwhile, we can go ahead. I have deployed this army in the ports so that we can go ahead and attack Ifranta. Just like that. Have we lost any units? No, we haven't. Uh, do we want to... Yes, we want to s to loot this settlement. Perfect. And go ahead and we can demolish. Go ahead and demolish. No, we're going to convert this. Uh, build this up. Build this up. You are going to be converted. You are going to be demolished and you are going to be converted. Just like that. Perfect. I'm happy with that. Of course, Carthage is... We have the faction leader over here and we're going to try to assassinate him, not sabotage supplies. We have a 36% chance of doing so, hopefully we succeed. And we don't, our agent instead uh, took a hit. And uh, what we need to do is we need to get a fleet to help out at Lipki. Which of course we will rename. That being said and done, we have uh, quite a bit going on over here. We're pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and actually do the same for Legio 9 Hispana. Go ahead, select all of our Latin troops, upgrade them. We can maintain the slingers. That's uh, pretty much the units we want to use. Meanwhile, all of these troops can be disbanded. And we can go ahead and get Legio 9 Hispana. Very quick look at where Legio 9 Hispana is. Legio 9. Okay, so there's Legio 9 Hispana and there's the Eagle Cohort. One Eagle Cohort. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And there we have built up our new Legion as well. We could build up more Legions. However, I am just going to wait and see how my economy fares. And uh, meanwhile, we can also move all of our troops over here. All of our proletarii over there. And uh, go ahead and disband not a proletarity uh, sorry our very greeny okay disband all of this and now what we need to do is we need to start building up our units so go ahead and get eight units of of these and with that we have uh, you know pretty much exhausted our our income or our treasury and uh, pretty much nothing else to do apart from level up a character. We can get the movement range modifier, which is uh, quite good. And uh, finally, just a quick look at, of course, the Carthaginian faction. They are pretty much wiped out and they will not survive. Uh, and I will progress the episode a little bit into the future. Uh, not this episode in particular, but the next episode will start when we have our armies ready to attack our next target, our next historical target, which is basically the Iberian factions. And of course, linking up our Iberian holdings with our Italian mainland by conquering a Narbonensis, um, at least the two provinces of Narbonensis, if not all three. However, that being said and done, I think I'm happy with this episode. And so I thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the video, then don't forget to like the video. And please subscribe if you are interested for more. Peace and love.